All right, welcome everybody to our Historic Commission Lecture Series. Grateful to everybody that's here tonight, especially grateful for our speaker. It's my honor and privilege to introduce our speaker tonight, someone who really needs no introduction. Steve Lafson was born and raised in Spanish Fork. His parents are Ted and Ruth Nelson Lafson. Steve graduated from Spanish Fork High School, class of 1971. He served a mission in the England North Mission. He attended BYU and graduated from UVU in construction management. He is the retired president and owner of SML Construction Incorporated. He is married to Cheryl Cosgray Lafson, and they are the proud parents of six children and grandparents of ten. Steve and Cheryl served as Utah foster parents for several years. They also recently served a senior couple mission in Texas Fort Worth. Yeehaw. Steve coached youth baseball, basketball, and football. He was the Fiesta Days Parade Chairman and has been very service-minded in the city. He was a city councilman for eight years and the mayor of Spanish Fork for eight as well. He loves Spanish Fork and loves to promote it every chance he gets. Let's welcome our guest speaker, Steve Lafson. Well, it's an honor to be here. I want to thank the committee for letting me come and speak about uh, ISOM. There's two things I really like to talk about. One is Spanish Fork and two is Iceland. So I get to hit both of them really good here to start with. Um, you know, growing up, I was told I was an Icelander, and that's we're always very proud of that. Um, we, uh, my grandfather, my dad, and uh, all our ancestors here were very strong in promoting uh, Iceland and the Icelandic days. My dad had been the chairman of that for many years, and uh, my grandfather had. And so it's just been second nature to tell people I'm an Icelander. So there's a lot of people that know more about Iceland than I do. We've got President Gesslesen that was a mission president in Iceland. His two sons served missions there. There's a lot of people that from Spanish Fork that served missions in, in Iceland. And uh, Lil Shepard, probably been to Iceland more than I know how many times and probably can tell you everything you ever wanted to know. But I'm just gonna tell you about my ancestors and my trip as mayor to Iceland. We did a friendship city with Westman Island. And so the first thing I wanna get out right now is as Icelanders, we don't recognize Columbus Day because Leif Erikson discovered America 500 years before Columbus came. So uh, I just wanted to get that out, let everybody know that who the real guy that, that discovered America. It was interesting, Leif Erikson, they were all explorers and there was a gentleman or a, a group that had come by the United States or America, but they didn't land there. And when he got back to Iceland, he mentioned that to the people, to Leif Erikson. So he said, hey, that sounds like a good adventure I want to go try. So that's why he came and went to uh, America. So a little bit about Icelanders and Spanish Fork. Let me read you a part of the plaque that's there on the, the monument. It says, Leif Erikson, an Icelander, discovered America in 1000 AD. Eight centuries later, 1855 to 1860, 16 pioneers from Iceland established in Spanish Fork the first permanent Icelandic settlement in the United States. They were Samuel Bjornsson and his wife, Margaret, Thordor Dickerson, and wife Helga, Sigamordor Gudmundsson, Loftor Johnson, and wife Gudrun, Joan Johnson, and his wife Anna, Gudrun John's daughter, and Magnus Bjornsson, and his wife Thordor, Veldness 
Bonchon Dotter and Gunny E. Halderson and Regnar S. Hansen and Mary Sherwood. I'm glad the last one was a good one. I could, could. Hey, those names are crazy to pronounce, and I probably slaughtered all of them really good, but um, it's, it's okay. So let me tell you a little bit about my great grandfather, or let's start with great great grandmother. So the missionaries, the first two missionaries in Iceland for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints or Mormons was two Icelanders. They uh, went to Copenhagen and they were going to learn a trade. And that was common back then that they would go to a different country and, and learn a trade. I think they were going to learn to be cabinet makers. And so they went to Copenhagen where they were taught by the missionaries, joined the church came back to Iceland, and so they told all their friends and family, and they got a lot of people that joined the church. Now, the Lutheran ministers weren't too happy with that, um, and so they got to the point there was a lot of persecution. I mean, we talk about the early pioneers getting a lot of persecution. Well, there in Iceland, they got a lot of persecution. And so what they did is they all moved to Westman Island. Now, Westman Island was still under Danish rule, so they found a safe haven there. So, so my great great grandmother, and uh, let me try to pronounce her name Sigdor Björnsjon's daughter. She had twin boys, and uh, she wanted to join the church. Her husband didn't want anything to do with it. So he basically kicked her out, said, you can take one of the boys, they were twin boys, and and you can leave and go join the church. So she did. She took my grandfather with Sigur, and they moved to Westman Island. And so they, he was about 12 years old when they moved there. So Sigur, my great-grandfather, uh, probably worked on the farm there in Westman Island, and he was also a fisherman, because that's a big fisherman port there. Now, you gotta realize Iceland, you can fit Iceland into half of Utah. So that's kind of gives you a perspective of the size of Iceland. And there's only uh, 380,000 people today in Iceland. So there's not very many people. Um, in Westman Island today, there's 4,000 is all. And that island, you could probably walk from coast to coast in no time. It's not a very big place. But it's, uh, it's known for their fishing and uh, a lot of your Icelandic fish come from Westman Island. So anyway, he joined the church, or they joined the church and they went there and uh, so when he got older, he got married. And they had their first child, and his wife died in childbirthing, and the child died. So uh, at 22, he said, I'm going to Utah. So his mom, he said, I'll, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, and then I'll make money, and then I'll send for you, and you can come. It'll be easier that way. So. He started his trek, uh, took a boat to Liverpool, England, and then from there to the United States. He made it all the way to Mission, North Dakota, before he ran out of money. So he stopped there. There was a little settlement of Icelanders there. And so he worked on the farm, earned enough money. So then he continued on to Utah and then to Spanish Fork. So he was very anxious into becoming an American. They all wanted to be part of America when they came here. So his name was Thigger, or, uh, Sigur Thor Leifson. So he changed his name to Sigur, his middle name Thor, and took Leifson as their last name because he wanted to be more American. And so I'm glad he did because, you know, if, if it had been different, now my father's name Ted, so my name would have been Stephen Tedson. And my sister, 
would have been Linda, Ted's daughter. And that's how they do that. And so genealogy is a nightmare in Iceland, trying to track all those people down. So anyway, uh, he got there. He got a job working for the railroad. He was a carpenter, and he was a builder. He saved enough money and um, sent for his mom. She came over two years later. So he got married again, and same thing happened again. His wife died a few months after giving birth, and the child died. So, uh, but he uh, he was a builder. He built a house there in on Center Street and Fifth East. But then, let me tell you about my great grandmother. Her name was Helda Furter, Helder Furter's daughter. We just call her Frida, so it's a lot easier. So, she lived in Westman Island, and uh, so she wanted to come to the United States, come to Utah. So the Gesslison family paid for her way to come over. And then she worked as their housekeeper and other people's housekeeper. So then she met Sigur, and they got married in Spanish Fork and raised a family. And, you know, third time's a charm. They had four kids, and my great, or my grandfather, J. Victor Leifson, was one of their kids. So we don't go very far back. So it's kind of interesting. Cheryl found this little pamphlet. It's a centennial program. Um, from, you know, the, they came in 1855. This was 1955 is when they had the centennial uh, program. And I liked it because there's a picture of my grandfather, J. Victor Leifson, on the committee, and my dad, Ted Victor, and my mom played the music for everything. They had a quorum, they had a, on the quorum of the 12 came down, um, Henry... D. Moiler. I had not heard of him before, but he came down. Uh, they had uh, someone from the uh, State Department come for the celebration. It was, so it was a big deal. You know, it still is a big deal. So, but, uh, so anyway, they were builders. My dad and my grandfather and uh, my great grandfather were three generations of builders. And in here, there's an advertisement that, that talks about three generations of builders. Now, everybody knows where Walker Marchuary is. And so I have a picture of, we had five generations of Lafsons work on that. My great grandfather, Sigurd, worked on it. My grandfather worked on it. My dad worked on it. I worked on it. And my kids worked on it. Well, we had them come and sweep it out, you know, so I could tell them that we'd all worked on there. So uh, that was really good. And so I, I kind of followed in that same tradition as uh, being a builder. You know, they, so a lot of the buildings here in Spanish Fork probably were built by my dad, grandfather, or great-grandfather. So moving along, when I was the mayor, we got a call from Fred Woods, who is a professor at BYU. He uh, written a book called Fire and Ice, and so he was really heavy into Iceland stuff. The nice fact, interesting fact about it is, is he's not an Icelander. has no ties to Iceland, but he loves Iceland. So he contacted us and said, hey, BYU is going to have a big program uh, next year, this, you know, this was in 2014, he contacted me, and uh, he said, we're going to have a big conference called Icelanders and their connection to Utah and the West. So he wanted me to go with him to invite uh, heads of state, the president of Iceland, and anybody that we could to come and, and be a part of that. So I said, we got thinking about it. I said, well, if we're going to do that, why don't we see if we can do a sister city or a friendship city? So I didn't know what city to do that with. So I called Lil Shepherd, and she, her and her son came over, and we looked at it, and they said, definitely has to be Westman Island. That's where everybody left from. And so I said, okay. So we got the wheels in motion, uh, contacted their people, and our people got a uh, the 
everything of the itinerary. So in 2014, in September, Fred Woods and I headed to Iceland. So um, what an experience for me. You know, it felt like I was coming home when I got there to Iceland. So here's a picture of, uh, this actually is a picture of Westman Island. Here's Reykjavik. As you'll see, there's a statue of Leif Erikson there. And that white building behind him is actually a hotel called the Leif Erikson Hotel. So, so it was really cool to, to come there and, and to finally be in Iceland. After listening to my grandfather talk, he spoke uh, Icelandic fluently. In fact, he was a big reader. And so he'd pick up a book and he'd read it in English, and if he got tired, he'd set it down and pick up one in Icelandic, and he could read on. And so, and my great-grandfather, Sigur, he's ha he had three hours of formal education, but he could speak three languages. He could speak Danish, he could speak Icelandic, and English. So he said, I can speak a language for each one hour of edu formal education that I got. So, but uh, they were all avid readers. So when I got there the first day that evening, uh, I met with this group. This is a group of, of people that would get together every month and they would want to talk about different religions or different topics and uh, just they all were, had a thirst of knowledge to learn. So they asked me about uh, the Icelanders that lived in Utah, especially Spanish work. So I had an opportunity to to brag on Spanish work, talk about Spanish work, and then the Icelanders there and our family, and talk about my family. So the, the gentleman standing right next to me, uh, that's Fred Woods from BYU. So the next morning, I uh, had the opportunity to be on the local radio station, and they wanted to know about Mormonism and the Icelanders what part they had and all the ones that left and went to Spanish Fork. And so, so I was able to, for about 45 minutes, be able to talk about, uh, once again, Spanish Fork, the Icelanders, and the church. So it was kind of cool because that thing went over. After this uh, meeting, I met with a newspaper editor who interviewed me and uh, I have the newspaper of that whole article, but it's all in Icelandic, so I don't know what I said. So I had anybody determine what it or interpret it for me yet. But that was kind of a cool deal. So this is the heads of state. This is a, I was able the next day to go to the consulate there in Iceland and have lunch, and we've got the the Secretary of State, we've got the Commerce, and uh, three of the people there that are, that we invited to come to BYU. Now, let me tell you this, I do not like lamb, and they eat a lot of lamb over there. That was probably the best lamb I've ever had in my whole life, and I don't think I've had it better yet since then. So. All these guys we invited to come, and uh, it was kind of interesting to be able to talk to them about their government. I could share our city government. I could talk about Spanish work, and we could compare notes. So this is the one and only Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints church building in uh, all of Iceland right here. So... Uh, we went to church that Sunday, and uh, when I walked in there, there were two missionaries, and they were both from Spanish Fork. One of them was David Tuckett's uh, son, and so it was kind of cool to to see that, you know, they were there to support Spanish Fork and represent us well. But there was uh, just a, this was a ward. There was only probably about ten to fifteen people there. And I asked uh, Elder Tuckett, I said, so how's the work going? He said, we've talked to a lot of good people. And he's almost to the end of his mission. 
you know, hadn't had a baptism at all. And, uh, but there was a ward and a branch in that, uh, at that time, back then. I actually was able to meet the branch president, and uh, as we were talking, he said, um, I am the reason why your cousin had to come home early from his mission. And I said, really? And I said, yeah, what happened? He said, well, we were playing softball, and I threw my bat, and I knocked out his teeth. <laughs> so anyway, it was kind of interesting to hear the connection. So um, you get all the family connections all through there. So it was just, it was great. Now today in Iceland, there are four, uh, ward, well, one ward and three branches. And one of the branches is Spanish-speaking which shocked the heck out of me. You know, I go, what? But a lot of these people from uh, Venezuela and all that, they're all moving, you know, to get away from their country, and they're coming to Iceland. And so the church is growing, probably not by baptisms there, but people moving in. And so that's it's kind of a cool thing. And when I was talking to President Grimson, the president of Iceland, he said, I'm probably the only president of a country that was at the, the ribbon, uh, dedication of a board building, you know, because he was there when they dedicated it. Part of the falls they have, they have uh, state parks there called the Golden Circle. And this is one of the, the areas of the Golden Circle. There are waterfalls all over this place. Um, they have a lot of water. And this is just showing you all the lava rock going down there to it. And this is, they're pretty proud of this geyser right here. And I said, well, you haven't been to, to Yellowstone, have you? So I haven't seen Old Faithful, but, but this is a geyser there. And so it was kind of cool to be able to go around, take a day, and, and, and go check all their local sites. Now, this is President Grimson. I had the honor to go to his house have uh, dinner with him. Here I am presenting uh, a picture of the Icelandic monument. Um, so what a gracious individual. He has been to Spanish Fork probably two or three times. Uh, he was a chairman uh, or pre chairman at one time, or grand marshal. He was our grand marshal one year. I remember that as a kid, him coming and, and being a, the grand marshal. But uh, as he was taking me through his house, well, first of all, you go to his house, you knock on the door, there's no security. A housemaid opens the door and invites you in. You know, I, I'm going, wow. So anyway, he's taking me around. He go upstairs in his house there, and he has all these statues and different things. And he said, these are all things that heads of state, presidents, kings, and, and all that have left and brought to me. He said, but the one I like the most is the one the church gave him. They gave him a little statue of the messenger that uh, the sculpture here, Gary Price from Springville, made that we have there. I'll show you a picture of it later here. But he said, this is the one I like the most. You know, this means more to me than any of them. Him and President Hinckley had a great relationship. They were very tight, you know, and... Uh, President Hinckley had been there to his house, and he said, he told me a story, President uh, Grimson, he said, you know, we're standing in my doorway, and President Hinckley's looking out over Iceland, and he goes, he said, this is such a beautiful country. He says, when I retire, I'm going to move here. He said, now, President Grimson said, you know, it was a couple years before I realized that they don't retire. And he said, I started laughing. He said, so that was pretty cool. All right, this young young man right here, his name is Thordal Timonson. He has a museum there uh, in Iceland, and he's preserved that. Now, Fred Woods wanted to interview him, so we're at his house interview or to interview him, and I introduced myself. I said, I'm, I'm Mayor Steve Leifson from Spanish Fork. And he looked at me and he says, uh, do you know J. Victor Leifson? And I said, well, yeah, that's my grandfather. He said, do you know Thor Leifson? And I said, well, that's my uncle. He said, have you been to the family farm? And I said, well, I didn't even know we had a family farm. He said, come on. 
He jumped in his car and took off 90 miles an hour, and we're chasing him down the road for about three or four miles. And uh, he took me to a place here. He knocked on the door of the house. There's a f couple there that are farming it, and they're talking in Icelandic. I don't understand what they're saying, but uh, then uh, they took us through the family farm. So this is the family farm right here. That's a dugout there. I could imagine that my great-grandfather probably walked right there and, and grew up there as a boy. You see a little waterfalls coming down. That waterfalls comes down, and you can see it go all the way to the ocean. So you look out there, and you can see the ocean there. So that was a neat experience for me to be able to look at our family farm and spend time there and and uh, be able to realize that I'm home. This is some of the things that uh, Thordal had preserved there. This is some of the early homes that was in Iceland. And he had a museum there. Inside his museum, I wish I'd taken a picture, there is a roll-up desk that my great-great-grandfather built, you know, the one that didn't want anything to do with the church. And so he said, look at this workmanship on this, and he built this. And so, you know, it was just kind of cool. But but uh, Thordahl was so gracious. Uh, he passed away about three years ago. And so, but he's kept this uh, museum going. And there's some new stock for the Fiesta Day Rodeo. Uh, they're not very big. <laughs> Those those Icelandic ponies, but uh, you see them all over along with sheep and everything else. So the next trip, next spot, we went to Westman Island. Now this is Mayor Ed Cleavy Vilnensen. He's the mayor of, of uh, Westman Island. And this is the first time we met, and he, as you can see he's pulled out his phone and he says, you know, I've been doing my genealogy, and you and I are related. And so we just had a bond right off the bat, right there. So what a uh, go-getter he was. Um, he, he was a great individual. He took, us, took me all around the island. And uh, over there, he, we pulled up to some cliffs, and there was a rope hanging down. And I said, what's this? And he says, well... Our ancestors would grab that rope, climb up the side of the mountain, and then they'd swing back and forth and pull eggs out of the puffins' nests and puffins, you know. He said, and he he did, he got up there and he did it, and then he he was twirling all over, and I go, wow. And he said, you want to try? And I said, no, 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 thanks. But uh, it was pretty cool to see that they still had that, so you could tell what was going on. This gentleman on the left, his name is Kari. Now he is the curator of the museum there at the library. And uh, the church helped organize the library there, um, I think in 2000. I might be wrong on that, don't quote me. But So there was a group together, they put some money together and they did um, the road design and in, so in that room it's about this long and about right to the, where the bleachers are and on that wall right there there is a picture of the Salt Lake Temple and uh, the Mormon Tabernacle Choir and there's a continuum feed of Mormon Tabernacle Choir music so when you walk in they're singing you know on this wall here, there's a picture of President Grimson, President Hinckley, the Icelandic monument, stuff about Spanish work. On this wall over here is a picture of all, everyone, 410 immigrants that left, that joined the church and went to uh, Spanish work. And there's their picture and their name and a little thing about them. And then on this wall right here, there's a big map a big map of Iceland and then the United States and a big red line showing them all going to Utah to Spanish work and right there it says Spanish work. So it was a 
cool place. So Kari, um, he probably knows more about Spanish Fork than any of us, you know, and, and the church. He, uh, he's unreal. And uh, so he took me downtown, and as we was walking down here, he looked up here and he said, this is where your great-grandfather lived. And we walked a little farther, and he said, this is where your great-grandmother lived. So we don't know if they knew each other, but when they both got to Spanish Fort, they got married. And so it was just kind of cool that he had known that history, and we could do that. There is Mormon Pond. This is, as you can see, there's a volcano uh, lava there, and the water would come up when the ocean raises up, and uh, this is where they'd be baptized. And they call it Mormon Pond. So if on all the maps in Westman Air, you'll see there it says Mormon Pond. It might be spelled different, but, and, it, and it's kind of cool. So it's kind of cool to see where all those people were and when they got baptized. And there's the picture of the messenger of that angel, little girl that President Grimson said he loved. So that monument right there behind there has engraved all the names of all the people that uh, immigrated from Iceland to Spanish Fork. So that was kind of cool. I was able to find my relatives there. So that's President uh, or Mayor Vilnison. I always call him Ed Cleavy. And he, we've been tight ever since we've been over there. He'll text me and I'll text him. And uh, We've stayed close in contact there. So that's his wife. We had dinner at his house. And uh, they're just gracious people. You know, they welcome you in. You know, you're just like family whenever you go there. I think that's why my grandfather liked going there all the time. He just enjoyed being there with his family. So they had a, a lecture that night. Uh, I was able to talk once again talk about uh, Spanish Fork, the people that immigrated there, and my relatives. And so I presented at Clevia a picture of the Icelandic monument there again. So what was interesting about this is Kari, he said before I was giving my talk, he said, if you need to go into my office and collect your mind and thoughts before that, why don't you go in there? So I went into his office, and I'm sitting there, on his desk, there's a book. It says, Biography of J. Victor Leifson. And then there's another book that said, Bishops and Bishopric of the Spanish Fork First Ward. And so I thumbed through it, and there were my dad's and my grandpa were in there. So it was kind of cool. Like I said, he, he knows more about Spanish Fork. He can tell you everything you wanted to know there. So I was able to give a lecture there. So there's what the, the pictures look like on the one wall. You know, that whole wall is just full of all their pictures. This is Grandma Frida, and, or my great-grandma Frida, and it gives uh, the information on her and so when they came. So it was kind of cool. As you walk through, you could see all the pictures there of those individuals. Um, then talking about... Um, Mayor Vilnison, he was telling me he has a brother, and they both love the NBA. So they decided, okay, each of us is going to choose a team. And his brother said, I'm going to choose the Chicago Bulls because Michael Jordan. And Ed Cleavy said, I'm going to choose the Utah Jazz. And I, so I asked him, I said, why did you choose the Utah Jazz? He said, Stockton to Malone, he said. So that was a pretty cool about that. So there we are signing the friendship uh, proclamation or the agreement between us both. And uh, so it was really neat. We, there's a copy of this in the city office somewhere that I signed. And so, but I'll read you what it said. It says, an agreement for the establishment of a friendship city agreement between Spanish Fork, Utah and Westman Air, Iceland. As a formal act of friendship and goodwill, the people of Spanish Fork, Utah, and the people of Westman Air 
Iceland give formal recognition to the significance of our shared history and our cultural relationship. By signing this document, we offer formal recognition and validation to the relationship between our two communities. We offer this document as a symbolic symbol of our shared dedication to continue strengthening our relationships. This will be accomplished as both of our cities continue to explore and foster awareness of our history and seek opportunities for future collaborations and enhance the culture connection between Spanish Fork, Utah, and West Monero, Iceland. Since the time a group of predecessors departed from West Monero and settled in Spanish Fork in 1855, becoming the first permanent Icelandic settlement in North America. The friendship between our two communities have remained constant. Together, we look forward to a bright future of this cherished relationship. So that was really an, offer, an awesome opportunity for me to be able to do that, uh, to be able to go to my ancestors' route. And like I said, it was just like going home and meeting family and friends wherever I went. I loved Iceland. I know the Icelandic settlement here in Spanish Fork was up on the East Bench, and I wondered if uh, the reason they chose that, probably because the best products were already gone by the Welsh and the English, but it always blows. The wind always blows up there, and in Iceland, the wind always blows. It blows all the time. So that's probably why they settled up there. So the following year, BYU had their uh, ceremony. Um, Ed Cleavy came over with one of his council members, and uh, he stayed at our house, you know, for three or four days, which was quite an honor. The president came over. There's a whole group that came over. We took them on a tour of Spanish Fort, took them to the cemetery. They were all interested in trying to find the headstones of their ancestors. Uh, we took them to Preston Hughes's little dugouts and all that stuff. Because when the first, first uh, Icelanders came here, that's what they did. They dug out in the side of the hill, and that was their first residence till they could build a house. And so, so it was cool. He, um, the mayor went up to Cheryl's school at Park Elementary and went to talk to their, to their kindergarten class. He even gave the announcements over the intercom. So it was kind of cool, yeah. This is a great guy. So uh, the next step was going up to Salt Lake. We took him up to the Tabernacle. They were able to tour Temple Square and be able to listen to the spoken word. And uh, then I handed him off to Gail Miller. And because uh, Gail Miller's husband now, Kim Wilson, was part of that committee that kind of put this museum together. And so, so here he was. Mayor Ed Cleavy, a Utah jazz fan, and now he's staying at Gail Miller's house, you know, <laughs> unreal. So, you know, dreams do come true. So uh, when I, we handed him off, uh, Gail turned to me and said, well, we're going over to the Delta Center to give him a tour. Do you want to go? So I said, sure. We. So Cheryl and I went with him and toured the whole facility. And her husband, Kim, said, well, it was an off season. The, of basketball, so he said, well, we'll have to have you and your wife come up to a game sometime. And I said, yeah, we'd love that, sure. Yeah, I'm sure they say that to everybody. About three or four months later, I get a phone call from, from Kim. Hey, we'd like you and your wife to come up to a jazz game, be our guests. And so, and we parked underneath the Delta Center where all the basketball players park. We went to the very top and had dinner where all the big wigs have uh, and then we sat on courtside next to Gail Miller and his wife and his, her husband. Uh, what a highlight, what an experience. Partway through the game, I get a picture, a text on my phone and I look at it and it's a picture of Cheryl and I and, and Gail and Kim on the front row. And I didn't know who it was from and the caption said, breaking news, mayor of Spanish Fork buys the Utah Jazz. And I, I, I didn't know who could send that, but to come to find out, it was our uh, um, uh, assistant manager, Tyler Jacobson, 
and said that he was straight across from us and sat there. But I'll tell you what, what an experience. I love being able to talk about Iceland. I love being able to talk about my family and heritage. And I'm going to take my beautiful bride and my siblings the end of August, we're going back to Iceland. So my brothers and my sisters and their spouse, we're going to go to Iceland. So I'm going to be able to share that with them. And so we're pretty excited about that. So in closing, I just want to say what an honor to be asked to speak here. A little bit about my experience of Iceland. Hopefully someday you guys will have the opportunity to experience Iceland like I did. Thank you.